right. Good evening, everyone. We would like to welcome you back to our Team Tuesdays webinar series. My name is Kristen Lenig, and I am the Central Field Director for Special Olympics Pennsylvania. I will be your host today during our webinar. My teammate, Haley Fusak, who is the SOPA Marketing and PR Manager, will be operating the presentation. I would also like to introduce our athlete co MC for this webinar, Amanda Gibson from our Washington Green Local Program. Amanda is currently a global messenger who participates in basketball, floor hockey, bowling, bocce, and golf. In her free time, Amanda likes to draw, play with her new puppy Ruger, and also has been volunteering with her local moose club by serving meals. It is a goal of Amanda's to one day compete at USA or World Games. Welcome, Amanda. Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to serve as a CCO MC, MC uh, for tonight. Strong Mind webinar. I would like to remind everyone that throughout this webinar, your mics, microphones will be muted and your video cameras will be disabled. You may submit comments in the chat box. At the end of our presentation, we will have a brief time for questions. Now, those questions that you want to ask our presenters should be submitted through the Q&A box, which is a little bit different than the chat box. Now, this webinar is going to be recorded and posted to our SOPA YouTube channel, where you can view later and share with others. As you all know, the purpose of this webinar series is to connect with all of you and share educational educational and motivational content. content to continue our mission. Thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. We are very excited to celebrate Mental Health Awareness Month with a presentation of the Special Olympics Strong Minds program, where we will learn about emotional health and different strategies to help work on our mental toughness. The presentation will be followed by a brief yoga session and a preview of a virtual Healthy Athletes event coming this June. It is now my pleasure to welcome First, our guest speaker, Amy Yonkers, Yonkers ha who serves as a strong-minded clinical director for Special Olympics Wisconsin. Welcome, Amy. Can you start by telling us a little about, your about yourself and how you got involved with Special Olympics? Hi, yes, hello, uh, Special Olympics Pennsylvania. Thank you, Amanda, for that intro. Um, yeah, my name is Amy, and I am the volunteer clinical director for the Strong Minds program uh, for Special Olympics Wisconsin. So I, um, outside of my work with Special Olympics, I am a licensed uh, counselor. So I work in mental health, particularly um, promoting mental health recovery through employment. So that's what I do in, in my jobs outside of, of Special Olympics. And I've been connected with Special Olympics for about 11 years. So when I was in college, I got connected uh, to a local program here in Wisconsin, and I started volunteering um, after finishing some of the, the work I did as an intern. And then I've just been a volunteer with, with uh, the Wisconsin program for the past 10 years, more running some of the uh, tournaments and organizing some stuff like that. And then when Wisconsin decided to add in the Strong Minds program um, as a healthy athlete's discipline, um, I was in discussion with some folks that, that it might be a good fit for me considering some of the mental health background I have, um, as well as my um, by experience working um, different tournaments and working with athletes and stuff like that. So it was, a, it was a great fit for me and I've been doing it for about uh, two and a half years now and we're we're excited in Wisconsin to have this program and it still feels really new. So we're still, you know, exploring it and promoting it. And um, I'm super excited to have a chance to talk to you all about it because I know it's something that you're 
you're excited about introducing into uh, your Pennsylvania program. So that's why I'm here. Thank you, Amy. We all have such uh, unique stories about how we've gotten involved in this amazing organization, whether you're in Wisconsin or Pennsylvania, we can all relate to that kind of story. Uh, we are so excited to learn more about Strong Minds, uh, the program, and, and uh, this is very new to Special Olympics Pennsylvania. So you're gonna teach us a lot tonight. So take it away, Amy. Awesome. Um, I purposely, I'm gonna share my screen and actually before I get too much going. I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So does that look like a strong minds PowerPoint? It does. Okay, good. Technology's on my side tonight. Um, so I am, I only have four slides. Um, and, and part of that is to keep me a little bit in check because I could talk about this topic for days. I could talk about it for a really long time. It's something I'm super excited about and really passionate about, but I wanted to um, kind of give you all a snapshot of um, kind of an, an intro to mental wellness and, and kind of start the conversations around what that looks like or what it can look like in conversations with Special Olympics athletes. And then a little bit about what Strong Minds does to um, promote that mental wellness and that stress reduc reduction um, in the program of Strong Minds. So um, you know, I think emotional health and mental wellness, there's a lot of different words that you can kind of use. Um, but for me, the, the valuable aspect of, of having a program like Strong Minds is recognizing that um, as, as athletes, you know, you do a lot of work to physically train your, your body, to learn skills, to learn, um, you know, to build endurance, to build strength, um, to, to put it all together into your competitions. And it makes a lot of sense that Special Olympics has created more disciplines, healthy athlete disciplines to recognize that there's a lot more to you than just being an athlete. So we all have minds and bodies that we, we want to um, work on getting stronger. So something like Strong Minds focuses on recognizing that our, our, our brains and our minds are as interconnected with the things that we do in our day-to-day -day life as our bodies are to our, our, the sports that we play and the, the activities that we do with, with Special Olympics. So I think this is a really cool program to be integrating in. I think it really, for everyone that has done Strong Minds or has been in, in connection with Strong Minds, I think has um, come away with a lot of valuable tools and techniques um, and so I think what, where, where we have to start, I think is to talk about like, what words do we want to use when we're talking about emotional health? Um, so if you want to take a second, like think about what sort of words come to mind when you think about mental wellness or emotional health, like what sort of things might feel, um, might feel like something that might kind of spark in your head around that. Give you a second to think about it. I know in Wisconsin, I have um, through Strong Minds have have most I think identified with the word stress. So stress is one of those words that I think um, is something that everyone can relate to. Um, you know, stress is something that's very normal. You know, everybody experiences stress. Um, Stress, even to a certain degree, can be healthy. You know, it, it keeps us uh, present in the things we're doing. It helps us kind of know when there's maybe something that um, we want to think about a little bit more. So, so stress is really something that we can use in strong minds as kind of the place that we want to put our focus. Um, the problem with stress is if we have too much of it, it takes away from our ability to do the things we want to do. So too much stress in competition may mean we're, we're not able to be the good teammate we want to be, or too much stress when you're at work may not allow you to get all your tasks done. So focusing on stress, I think, is a really good way to, um, to kind of start those conversations about our mental health. So here's a, I think just a really nice visual um, to recognize that stress is very unique to each one of us. So while we all experience it and while it's something very normal, we all might feel stress in different ways. 
So a lot of times stress can present um, very differently throughout our body. So um, for me personally, like when I'm stressed, I get a stomach ache. That's definitely something that I experience. Um, I also get headaches. That's something that's really common for me when I'm feeling extra stressed. So one thing that we can do when we start talking about stress with athletes is we can start to also learn what stress looks like, what stress feels like, so that we can then learn the tools and techniques to work through that stress. So, you know, you can see here, it might be a lack of interest. You, know, you might start losing some, some interest in the things you're doing, or maybe you're feeling a little bit more tired. Um, you might be having a little bit more anxiety. You have a little bit more nerves around the things of your day-to-day -day life. Um, these are all ways that, that stress can kind of present itself. And I think it's really important to, you know, name that stress is normal, name that it's something we all experience, identify the, the ways that we feel it, the, the environments that we feel stress and what it looks like for us, and then create um, kind of a game plan for how we are going to work through stress in our lives. I think being able to take on stress is really empowering. Um, it doesn't have to be something that we don't have any control over. We can learn skills, we can learn tools and techniques to better address stress in our lives. So there are some, I think some really great everyday tips for, for keeping um, you know, a strong mind. And these are some examples that SOI had, had provided. So you know, connecting with others, you know, making sure you're getting enough sleep, um, staying active, um, you know, eating the right kinds of foods that make you feel good, that keep you well fueled, um, and then having strong mind strategies kind of in your back pocket um, to use either every day and, and kind of preventatively because they, they make you feel good or also to pull out in a time when you have that extra stress in your life or extra stress in your day. So this is where strong minds really comes into play. So we are able through the strong minds program, um, which if you remember is a healthy athletes discipline. So sometimes when you go to tournaments, you might go to, um, uh, healthy, I, I'm going to maybe get the words wrong, but like healthy smiles, or you might go to some of these other um, healthy athlete disciplines where you can um, get some more support around your eyesight or your, your dental hygiene or your foot health. So all those things, Strong Minds is now going to be hopefully for you guys soon, another one of those disciplines that you can uh, attend when you're at a tournament to learn some of these strategies. So here is a kind of a tiny teaser to Strong Minds. I would love to be able to give you like a full Strong Minds event tonight, um, but I don't think tonight's quite the right night for it. Um, but I'll just give you a tiny teaser so that when you see it at, at a tournament in the future, you have an idea of what you might want to um, learn about. But what we do is, you know, we have athletes come in and they get a chance to go through different stations. And each station has a purpose of identifying um, what stress is and, and then the couple strategies that you can take away. So it could be using a stress ball and recognizing the stress that we hold in our bodies. It could be focusing on strong messaging, um, thinking about the words we say to ourselves, thinking about the, the things we can, we can um, have around us visually that, that make us feel better, that remind us that we're strong, that we can get through things. Um, well, you could do a little strong breathing exercise where we talk about, you know, kind of controlling your breathing, which can do a lot to calm your nervous system to kind of get yourself a little bit more present and, and back to a place where you can take on the things in front of you. Um, strong stretching, it's another way to, to recognize that your mind and body are connected and you can you can do exercises that are going to help you release some of that tension you might be holding. I think you're going to get a chance to maybe do some of that later today uh, in this call. And then strong supporting, recognizing that we have support systems around us. Um, I think it's an awesome idea to, to think about, you know, in a time of, of need, in a time of, of wanting to be reminded of some of these strategies, who can you look to? Who can you ask for support? Um, and in turn, who can you share these strategies with when you leave here? Who, who in your life might benefit from getting a little um, education around some breathing techniques or, or using a stress ball? So I think strong supporting is a, is a great technique to recognize that this is now something that 
you can work on and it's something that you can share with other people in your life. Um, I think for coaches, this is a great opportunity to talk about you know, teamwork and support and, and kind of figuring out what your support systems are, um, how athletes can support each other, and um, just kind of all those things that go into um, kind of practicing that mental wellness and then being able to, to apply it, not to just maybe a tournament, not just just you know, your, your sports, but how can you bring it into other parts of your life? How can you practice these things at work? How can you practice these things um, in your home when maybe there's a, a situation that kind of brings a little bit more stress in your home life, um, your school? You know, there's lots of places that, that you may find this to be really, really, really helpful techniques um, to utilize. So um, yeah, I, I, that's, that's kind of my, for today, this is kind of my, my, uh, my place to maybe leave you with these teasers to kind of show you um, that this is something that hopefully you'll have more opportunities to learn about in the future. Um, I think, you know, just kind of the, the main takeaways is like, you know, it's really important for us to focus on our mental wellness. It's important for us to give as much effort towards our mental wellness as we do our physical health. Um, and that if these, if you get a chance to practice these tools and techniques, I think you're really going to find an opportunity, um, to apply them kind of throughout special Olympics, but also kind of beyond special Olympics into your everyday life. So that is what I have for you today. I'll, I'll, uh, stop sharing my screen. Oh, there's probably one more great photo. Of course, they always end with a great photo, um, physically strong. And of course, mental, mentally strong as well. Um, and yeah, that's what I got for you. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you for joining us and giving us that little strong minds teaser. It was great to learn about the program and being armed with strategies for how to properly deal with stress. We would now like to welcome Megan Shashiri to learn, lead us in one of the strong-minded strategies. strategies we just learned about yoga. Thanks for joining us tonight, Megan. Can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your work with Special Olympics Pennsylvania. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, my name is Megan Sakari, and I have been involved with Special Olympics for probably 25 years, maybe more. My sister is an athlete, so um, I used to volunteer with all of her sports, some of her favorites were basketball and bowling and swimming. And I always really loved doing that. So when I moved back to, I moved away for quite a few years and then I moved back to Pittsburgh about six years ago. Um, and I got involved with Special Olympics Pennsylvania again, um, specifically on the Uncathlon committee. So I don't know if anybody here is has participated in an UNCAF one, um, but it's been really fun to get back in the community and um, be involved again. So I've been involved for a very long time, but have recently um, gotten more serious with my involvement in my adult life. So I'm gonna move my computer so that we can practice yoga together. I'm not sure if anyone has ever practiced yoga before, um, but we're gonna start in our chair. So you don't need a lot of space to practice yoga. Uh, while yoga is a, it can be a physical exercise. It can be good for your body, but it's so good for your mind. And a big part of yoga is breathing. So we're gonna take some time and get to know our breath. So maybe if you are sitting on a chair or a couch, if you can, maybe scoot to the edge of your chair 
and sit up as tall as possible. So try not to slouch like we all do when we're tired or when we're trying to get comfortable. See if you can zoop, grow your spine a little bit taller. Take your hands and let's place them, how about let's place them on our chest to start. Now just do a little check-in with how you're feeling. How is your body feeling today? And how is your mind feeling today? Did you have a nice, relaxing, sunshiny day? Or did you maybe have a stressful day or not the best day? We all experience these different types of days over and over, always again in our lives. Now that we've checked in with our body and with our mind, let's start to breathe. So we're gonna breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth like this. When you breathe out, kind of blow, maybe like you're blowing out a birthday camera or a birthday camera. I was thinking about how I wanted to say that my dog is in the camera. So if you see my dog, this is Henry. Um, he can be a little bit noisy. So anyway, when we're breathing out, Put your lips together and blow like you're blowing out a birthday candle is what I meant to say. So here we go. And our hands are on our chest because it can be nice to make contact, to feel your body. And I want you to see if you can feel your chest lift up when you inhale and fall back when you exhale. Here we go. Inhale through your nose. Blow that breath out your mouth. Inhale through your nose. Blow that breath out through your mouth. Three more times, ready? Inhale through the nose. Blow that breath out. Second time, inhale. Exhale. Last time, inhale. Open your mouth, blow it out. Very nice, everybody. Nice job breathing. So think a moment, think for a moment about how that breath felt. Was your nose a little bit stuffy when you were breathing in? Or did it feel really weird to blow out through your mouth? Or maybe you were nervous to make some noise? None of these answers are wrong. It doesn't matter. It can just be nice to think about your experience with that breath. So we're gonna to continue to breathe some more. And this time we're gonna take our hands and put them on our ribs. If you have enough space to the side to let your elbows hang wide. And let's notice, this time we're gonna breathe in and out just through our nose. Unless your nose is stuffy, then you can breathe however you like to. But we're gonna see if we can feel our ribs move while, you're, while we're breathing. So here we go, ready, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale, three more, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, and exhale. Very nice, you can relax your hands. Maybe shimmy out your shoulders. I always love any reason to shimmy my shoulders. Just take a moment to notice how that breathing felt in your body. And now before we start to, actually let's start to move our body. Let's move around, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then we're gonna get tall in our body again. So we'll sit up nice and tall. And let's take our left, here and drop it toward our left shoulder. 
Just hold here for a moment and let's take a big breath in and out through the nose. Here we go. Breathe in and breathe out. Now let's switch sides and drop our right ear toward our right shoulder. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. Bring that head back up. And we're going to look up if it feels okay to you. Sometimes looking up can feel a little bit panicky. So if it makes you feel uncomfortable, you don't have to do it. But if you want to give it a try, we're going to reach our chin up toward the ceiling. Now let's take that big breath in and that big breath out. Very nice. Bring your head right back to the center. And this time we're going to drop our chin down to our chest. Notice if you feel that stretch in the back of your neck. Sometimes we hold a lot of stress in the back of our neck. Let's take a big breath in here. And a big breath out. And bring our eyes back up to the screen. How about three big shoulder rolls? to the back of the room, to the wall behind you. Nice and big. Nice job, everybody. Now let's reverse these shoulder rolls. This one always feels really funny to me. So we're gonna roll our shoulders forward toward the camera. Eef. Nice job. Eef, I did. And then go ahead and relax. Now, if you've done some yoga before, you may have heard of sun salutations. Sun salutations are just a way of moving your body around and kind of waking it up and getting your muscles nice and loose. So we're going to do some seated sun salutations to start. So again, sitting nice and tall through that spine, grow tall in your seat. And we're going to move with our breath this time. So you can move at your own pace if I'm going too fast or too slow. Especially we're going to do this a couple of times. So move in a way that feels good and right to your body. We all have different bodies and we all have had different days and might be feeling differently today. So on an inhale, breathe in and reach those arms all the way up toward the ceiling. Very nice. And then on your exhale, those hands can come down to your lap. Good. On an inhale, tip forward in your chair and reach your chest forward. This is called cow pose or seated cow pose. And then as you exhale, we're gonna round our back and tuck our chin to our chest like a scared cat. Inhale, sit nice and tall in your seat. Good, and exhale. With our next breath in, we're gonna reach those arms back up to the ceiling. And as we exhale, let's bring our hands together in front of our chest. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. Good job, everybody. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach all the way up toward the ceiling. You can even look up if you like that. Exhale, your hands can come down to your lap. Nice. Inhale, reach your chest forward. Open up that chest. Reach your heart forward. Exhale, round your back like a scared cat. Inhale, sit back up. Stay here for that breath out. Inhale, reach up toward the ceiling. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your chest. Let's take one big breath in and one big breath out. Great job. Let's do this one more time. Here we go. Breathe in, reach all the way up to the ceiling. Breathe out, bring your hands down to your lap. Beautiful. Inhale, reach your chest forward, cow. Exhale, round your back, tuck your chin, cat. Inhale, sit tall. Exhale. Inhale, reach your arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. 
take a big breath in and a big breath out. And just relax. Hands can come to your lap. Now, if you have space and want to join me, I'm going to do two sun salutations standing up. If you don't have space or you don't feel like it, you can stay in your chair and do exactly what we were just doing. So I'm gonna stand up. Sure. And I'm gonna move my chair over a little bit. But a chair can always be a nice thing to help with balance. So if you're standing and you know you have a little bit of wobbliness in your balance today, it can be nice to stand near something to grab onto. Can you see your? Yeah. You can All right. Up. Wherever you are, inhale and reach your arms up to the ceiling. Beautiful. And then exhale and fold forward, reaching toward your toes, or just bring your hands back down to your lap if you're in a chair. Very nice. We're going to plant our hands on the ground. Come down to hands and knees. This is called tabletop. Now, if you're in the chair, you're going to join us. We're going to inhale, drop our belly, reach our heart forward for cow. Inhale, nice. you drop the belly. And then exhale, round through your spine. Tuck your chin to your chest for cat. Inhale, either sit Inhale, tall or just belly. come back to tabletop. And then very carefully, again, you can use your chair if you need to, we're going to stand up. So I like to step forward with both feet, but you can stand up however you like. Inhale, reach up toward the ceiling. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. Nice job. Take a big breath in through your nose. Let's open up our mouth and let it out. See, you're not doing I can't doing hear you guys, but I feel like that wasn't loud enough. So let's try that breath again. Don't be afraid to make some noise. That can be a great stress reliever. Here we go. Inhale through your nose. Open your mouth and let it out. <sighs> nice job. Let's do one more sun salutation. Inhale, reaching up toward the ceiling. Maybe look up. Exhale, hands to lap or fold forward, hands toward your toes. Carefully come down to hands and knees. Alexa, stop. Come down to hands and knees. Inhale, reach your chest forward. Drop that belly for cow. Good. Exhale, round through your back for cat. Come back to tabletop or sit up tall. And from here, we're gonna stand up again. I like to step forward with both feet and stand up. Nice job. Inhale, reach up toward the ceiling. Exhale, bring your hands together in front of your heart. All right, here's that big loud breath. I can't hear you, but I wanna hear you from wherever you are in Pennsylvania. Here we go. Inhale through the nose. Open your mouth, let it out. <sighs> Very nice. You can relax your arms, shake out those shoulders. Now we're gonna do one balancing pose. So if you're able, you can stand up. And if you want to stay seated, that's okay. I can show you how to do this in a chair. We're going to practice our tree pose, which is a pretty popular yoga pose. You might know it already. So I'm going to use my chair to help me balance. And I'm going to keep my right foot on the ground. And then I'm going to lift my left foot up and give my toes a little wiggle wiggle. And then you have some options here. So you can either just Bring that left toe in toward your right ankle and pop that heel up off the ground, but keep your toes on the floor for balance. Wherever you are, we want to turn that knee out toward the side. So if you're feeling steady or brave, you can bring that foot to the inside of your calf. 
Or if you're feeling braver than me, you can bring it up to the inside of your thigh. Come that on. doesn't feel good to me today. So I'm going to keep my foot nice and low and turn that knee out. Now, if you want to try, you can take your hands away from the chair or maybe bring them together in front of your heart. Let's do it the way you Or do it if you want to go crazy, oh, you can maybe reach those arms up to the ceiling and guess this. what if you fall in tree that's all part of yoga it doesn't matter you just get to try all over again no big deal so let's hold this tree and take a big breath in and a big breath out and relax your hands you can go ahead and put both feet on the ground we're going to move to the other side. So I'm going to show you this one in a chair. I'll show you both ways. So if you're seated, you can lift your, we're going to keep our right foot on the ground or our left foot on the ground this time. You can lift your left foot up off of the ground and then see if you can zoop, push that knee out to the side while keeping your foot lifted. That can be really hard to hold that foot up while you're sitting down. So if you're in a chair, you can play around with this. If you're standing, you can, again, remember, you can put your foot nice and low. You can even keep those toes on the ground or you can bring that foot up a little higher. And now let's think about being a nice, strong tree. So let's think about our roots, our feet really grounding down into the floor. Maybe you can imagine roots growing out of the bottoms of your feet, like you are a tree. And from here, if you want, you can play around with those hands. Maybe your tree is blowing in the breeze, or maybe it's very still, or maybe like me, it's about to tip over. But let's see if we can hold our tree and take a big breath in and a big breath out. And then relax your feet. Go ahead and sit back down. So we're just gonna do about one minute of breathing. So sit nice and tall in that chair. And again, I want you to check in with your body. How are you feeling in your body? And how are you feeling in your mind? Do you feel any differently than before we started this yoga session? Or do you feel exactly the same? There is no right answer. It's just nice to check in and see how you're doing today, how you're feeling right now. Like we heard about earlier, our mental health is so important. And there's so many things we can do to help ourselves feel better. Moving our bodies is one of those things. Relaxing our brains and practicing breathing is also one of those things. So I think that it's very important to move your body as much as you can, but I also think it's very important to practice breathing because while we all know how to breathe, we all know how to breathe, right? We're alive, um, that means we're breathing. But if we can get better at paying attention to our breath, that can help our brains learn to relax, which helps our bodies learn to relax which helps our mental health. It helps with stress. And it also helps us to be better athletes. So for the next 30 seconds, we're just gonna breathe in silence. If you'd like to close your eyes, that can feel really nice. Or you can just stare at something in the room around you. 
Try to relax your face. Relax your shoulders. Relax your fingers and toes. And now we're just going to breathe. If your eyes are closed, you can go ahead and open them. Let's all one last time, bring our hands together in front of our heart. And we're gonna take one big inhale and exhale all together. Let's see if we can breathe in and out through our nose. Ready, here we go. Take a big breath in and a big breath out. Thanks everybody so much for practicing yoga with me tonight. It's so nice to be here with you all. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Megan, for joining us. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but I am feeling very relaxed. Uh, that was a good stretch as well. So nice and calm to, to finish off the webinar, right? <laughs> thank you. Me too, it's now time to welcome a friendly, familiar, familiar face, so Super Vice President of Mission in Integration. Integration, Chelsea Hamill. Hamill. Chelsea is going to tell us about an upcoming virtual event, Be a Healthy Athlete. Thank you so much, Amanda. I hope I have a familiar and friendly face. <laughs> it's so great to be here this evening and I, I really appreciate you having me, Kristen and Haley. I'm quite honestly honored to follow Amy and Megan. I'm here to tell you about a really exciting opportunity. If you have been to an in-person uh, competition with Special Olympics Pennsylvania at a uh, our state games. So that would be at Fall Festival, at Villanova University, Summer Games at Penn State, uh, Winter Games at Seven Springs Resort, uh, Indoor Winter Games at uh, York Expo Center, any of those really large events, which I know many of you have participated in or volunteered at, you may recall seeing or hearing about what we call healthy athletes. I know it's been forever, what it feels like forever since we've been to those large in-person games. And I get it. Um, it has been a while. But just try and think back. And at those games, you may recall, again, healthy athletes. Healthy athletes is where we bring volunteers that are often doctors or other healthcare professionals to provide screenings. Um, to athletes at absolutely no cost. In addition to the screening, there is often education as well as giveaways. You know, there are things like uh, insoles for shoes. There are things like mouth guards, all wonderful things to help us live a healthy life. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we have not been able to offer many in-person activities. And because of that, of course, we haven't been able to offer healthy athletes. I am so happy to be here tonight to tell you about an upcoming virtual Healthy Athletes event. So I'm gonna share my screen. Just give me one second and talk to you a little bit about this Healthy Athletes virtual event. So what I'm pulling up Kristen, can you see, can you just give me a thumbs up? Okay, great, great, great. What I've pulled up right here is actually a postcard that is being mailed to all of our athletes statewide. It should go in the mail later this week. So athletes, 
um, that participate with us will receive this postcard with some information about the upcoming Healthy Athlete event, as well as just general summer games information. Again, I'm here today to tell you a little bit about this Healthy Athletes virtual event. So it's going to be a week-long virtual event, meaning it's not going to happen in person. It's going to happen right behind a screen. Athletes will um, have an opportunity to really get ready for the upcoming sports season. And by doing so, they will meet with volunteer healthcare professionals, as well as some students that will answer questions about their health. They're going to receive health education. And two, learn about re what resources you have in your local community. So if you're an athlete here today, I would encourage you to write these dates down because it's upcoming. It's just about a month away. It is going to be Monday, June 21st, and it's going to be a week long. So it's going to go until Sunday, June 27th. I'm going to tell you more about the day and the time in just a bit, but we are, we are happy that all of our different healthy athlete disciplines will be offered. So we're going to have vision information. We're going to have dentistry. We're going to have physical therapy. We're going to talk about better health and well-being. We're going to talk about audiology. And um, last but not least, just like Amy talked about uh, to you today about strong minds, which is emotional health. So we want all of our athletes, as, as well as, of course, our local program volunteers to know about this event. I am now going to show you the sign up because all of our athletes have to sign up. It's just like going to the doctors as you normally would. You're going to have to sign up for an appointment. So when you get this postcard in the mail, you're going to go to this website. It's just signupgenius.com backslash go backslash SOPA HA. Again, if you don't remember that, you could always go to our website, specialolympicspa.org and get the information that you need. But I'm going to go right to Sign Up Genius and show you that site. Here is, nope, not that one. Here it is. Here it is. And again, there are multiple different disciplines, right? Here we have opening eyes, our vision, special smiles, our dentistry, fun fitness, our physical therapy, health promotion, that better health and well-being, healthy hearing, audiology, last but not least, strong minds, which is that emotional um, well-being, health and well-being. So it is really simple to sign up. But again, if you're interested in signing up for more than one discipline, you have to do that. So I'm just going to give you an example so you can see it today. So let's pretend that we wanted to get opening eyes information. And there's multiple choices for opening eyes. Let's say we were interested in I wear glasses and I want to know how to take better care of my glasses. So I'm going to choose that sign up, click that, and do submit and sign up. When I do that, it's going to ask me for some information. My first name, Chelsea, last name, Hamill, email address. If I didn't have an email address, I can skip this. So if you don't have an email address, that's okay. And you don't have to put your email address in. I'm going to put my email address, chamill at specialolympicspa.org. It's going to ask for my phone number. I'm going to put in a phone number. And then it wants to know where I'm from, what local program. So for example, I'm just going to put in Philadelphia. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to choose sign up. And by doing that, it's going to send me an email with information on how to log in on June 22nd at 8, 8, 8 p.m. If I was interested in doing additional disciplines, because I've only now signed up for opening eyes, I would now just go into additional disciplines and sign up. So we're really, again, excited and we're uh, very hopeful that athletes will take advantage of this free health education. Athletes that participate in multiple disciplines, as they would in person, 
meaning they go through more than one discipline. There are lots of different prizes that we are uh, raffling off. Our grand prize to be a Nintendo Switch. Um, but again, there are some other great prizes that are not as grand as the Nintendo Switch. If you're interested at all, if at all about learning more about the Healthy Athletes events, you can go to our website, specialolympicspa.org, and just uh, read more about our Healthy Athletes events. I'm going to show you how to get to this page just so you know. So again, assuming you're familiar with our website, you're just going to go to this more than sports tab, health programs, and then 2021 virtual health events. And there you can see all the information as well as go to sign up genius. We're in process of adding the different uh, raffle tiers because I know everyone loves free stuff. So you definitely will want to check back to this website to see some of the cool giveaways we have for that upcoming event. That's all I have here for you today. Should you have any questions, athletes, volunteers about the event, I'd love to hear from you. My contact information can be found on this webpage. So I it, it would welcome the opportunity to speak with you directly. Thank you so much, Kristen and Haley and Amanda for having me here today. Thank you, Chelsea. Um, and we did actually put in the chat box, uh, we put the dates, and I think we also put the link in there for the website that Chelsea was just sharing with us. So if any of you have any questions there, um, check out the chat box, go ahead and click on the link so you have that to look at later. And uh, if you have questions, obviously you can reach out to us or Chelsea if you have anything. Great, great. Thank you so much. It looks like a it's going to be a very fun event. I think we're all getting exciting for uh, excited for an amazing virtual event. I can't wait to sign up for some sessions. At this time, we would now like to allow questions for our speakers. You can submit. submit these questions through the Q and A box, and Kristen. Kristen will read them out loud on the webinar. All right, thank you. So we're gonna bring our panelists back, our, our presenters back, and we're gonna have a couple questions here for everybody, hello again. And we had a couple that came through here. So Amy, I see you on my screen first. So uh, we're gonna put you in the hot seat first. <laughs> so one of the questions that came through for you, Amy, is um, how can I help my other friends who are stressed or going through stress? How can I help them? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, you know, one thing you can do is just listen. I think understanding and, and hearing people when they when they have that stress can go a long way to let them know that they're not alone in that and that they've got support in you as a friend. Um, if you have learned some of the techniques, some of the breathing techniques that Megan did, I think you could share some of those. Um, I think that could be a great opportunity to practice some of those things together. Um, and of course, don't, don't hesitate to reach out maybe to, if you, if you, if you feel like you maybe want to talk more with this person, like maybe you want to reach out to a coach that they work with or, you know, other family supports, there's always help around you. So if you feel like you need more help, you can always reach out to another person um, to kind of seek that support too. Great, great. Now, this is a kind of a, a big question here, but one that came through was, why do people stress in different ways? Ooh, that is a good question. Yeah, that's um, a thinker. Why do people stress in different ways? You know, I think it's because we are just all very different people. You know, everybody is different. We all, our bodies are different. Our minds are different. Um, the things that make us nervous are different. Some people love certain things and some people those things make them really anxious and, and really upset. So, you know, our, our stress is about as unique as any other part of you. Um, and so I, I think it makes sense that, you know, for somebody, it might be, you know, something more in, in the muscle tightness and for someone else, it might be more in the stomach ache. It's, it's just really individualized. Um, but what I like about 
being able to identify that is that we all can still kind of use some of the same strategies. So even if it looks different for you or a situation that creates stress is different than someone else's situation, you might find some common ground in some of those techniques and strategies that can help. Great, great question. Um, we did have one that came through for you, Chelsea. Um, when you were going over uh, all the ways people can register for the different events, one of the questions that came up was, um, can I sign up by myself or do I need to talk to my local program first? Great question. So um, it is, it is uh, completely voluntarily uh, up to the individual if they would like to sign up. So this does not necessarily require an athlete to speak with a local program. It is at no cost. Certainly they can tell the local program as well as other athletes in the, in the program that they're going to participate, but they don't necessarily have to ask for permission. Um, we are sharing this information with our local program management teams uh, this week, actually, so they know about the upcoming event as well. So athletes, if you would like to participate, we would highly encourage you to sign up and participate. All right, awesome, great question. Um, so another question for Chelsea. So <laughs> stay in that hot seat, Chelsea. Um, this is for Chelsea. I am an athlete uh, from York PA and they are doing a sports physical. Um, do you know what that means, Chelsea? Is it, are they doing a sports physical? Yeah, are they doing a sports physical? Yeah, I yeah, guess so, that's what it is. Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the disciplines through Healthy Athletes is called MedFest. And that discipline does provide a primary care sports physical. Um, we are not offering that discipline uh, virtually through the upcoming June uh, an event. Um, so unfortunately, all of the disciplines, aside from MedFest, will be offered. Okay, great, great. Thank you for that. Um, we do have a question from Megan as well. Um, Megan, this is a question about um, using yoga for part of your, uh, your training. So how can we build in yoga into our workouts, into our regular training schedule? Should that be something we do before and after we're training on a separate day? Should yoga be a separate exercise and how often we should do that? Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I think any time is a good time for yoga. So um, Breathing is a great thing to practice every day or a few days a week if you can. Just, you know, set a timer for two minutes or five minutes and practice your breath. Um, that will help you tremendously in your training. And as far as stretching and things like, oh, there's the dog making noise. As far as stretching and things like that go, um, it can be nice to do before or after your training. Um, or maybe just on days where you're not training, where you're taking a day off from training, it can be really great to take some time and stretch so that your muscles are stay nice and flexible instead of tight and, and tense for your training. So, you know, I think, I really think that these things can be done anytime and you don't need to stress out about adding so much more to your training, but just doing them in little pieces through the, through your days. If you love taking a yoga class, go take a yoga class. There are plenty of free classes on YouTube. Um, if you need some help finding free classes, you can contact me or um, let me know. I can help you find some of those, but just doing like five or 10 minutes during your day will, will help you a lot in your training. Great. And Megan, another one that came through is um, how is exercise good for your body and your mind? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. So it can be good for your body because just like your training, you're moving your body, you're, you're getting stronger, um, you're staying flexible. Our goal is to, to move around through our whole lives, right? So it can be really nice to train for these sports but it's really important to keep, keep your body moving so that you stay healthy as you get older as well. And whenever we're training our body to get stronger and healthier, we're also in turn training our minds to think about these things, to think about being healthy, to think about being stronger. And your body and mind 
while some people, we always talk about them being separate, they're so interconnected. So the more that you're thinking about healthy things, you're thinking about training and breathing and eating healthy foods and talking to friends about stress, the more that translates to your physical health, your, your physical body. So the more you can think positively and think healthfully, the more your body will follow and vice versa. The more we move our body and treat our body well, that helps our mind and our stress and all of those great things that come with emotional wellness that we, like we were talking about. Awesome. Well, you are uh, sparking some more questions here, Megan. We have another one that came in for you. Um, uh, this athlete is telling us that he gets bad headaches. What should I do um, for that? What breathing exercises or is there something else he should do for headaches? Sure. Um, so drinking water is very important for one. Maybe try to drink a couple extra glasses of water when you have a headache. And breathing and stretching are so wonderful. So let me just tell you about this, this breath really quickly. It's called a, an anchor breath. So your breath is your anchor. It kind of brings you back to the present moment. And a very simple way to practice that is breathing in for four count and breathing out for four count. So that will slow your breath down a little bit. I'll demonstrate one really quickly. We'll breathe in two, three, four, and out two, three, four. So that's a little bit slower than most of us would normally breathe, but taking the time to slow it down will might help your headache and also stretching, just simple stretches like we did in the chair, you know, like shifting your head side to side or reaching up and bending over can be really great for headaches. Gentle stretching. Awesome, thank you for the advice. Uh, Chelsea, we have another one for you. Uh, let's keep this energy up, guys. We wanna see all of you at the virtual, uh, the virtual Healthy Athletes event. Um, this athlete is asking, what kind of fitness exactly are you talking about for the event? Can you go into a little bit further detail with that? Sure, so majority of the sessions will be group sessions. So they will range anywhere from 10 to a group size as large as 20. Fun fitness, the physical therapy discipline, is the only discipline that will be one-on-one. -on -one. So you'll meet with physical therapists, they'll evaluate your fitness levels, and based on your fitness level, we'll focus on, I think it's one of uh, three or four categories, strength, flexibility, balance, and or um, there's one other Agility, that was the other one. So there's one of four topics that they'll focus on. Um, so those are the core uh, fun fitness, aka the physical therapy disciplines uh, topics that the physical therapist will work on with athletes directly. All right, thank you. We're really testing your knowledge on this event. <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> All right, guys, well, we have to wrap up soon. We have one more question I do want to ask that I thought was really important. So we're going to have Amy jump back into the hot seat one last time for the final wrap-up question. Uh, the question is, why is our mental health as important as our physical health? Uh, that is a great question. It's a big question. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it comes back to what we were talking about, where it's just, it's every, it's a part of every day of your life. You know, your, your mental wellness and your physical wellness are super interconnected. Like, me, like Megan said, they're, they're part of everything you do. Um, your brain is working all of the time. You have emotions, you, you experience things in your life. And so, you know, I think it's really important to honor the work and the, the practice that we can put in for our mental health is uh, alongside our physical health. I don't think one is more important than the other. I think they're both really, really important. Um, and I think if we can continue to work on the mental health uh, side of things, the emotional health side of things, I think you're going to find that you can do more. You can take on more things in your life. You can, you can have more experiences. You can, um, you can get through more things. And I think it really leads to, um, you know, a more enjoyable life, a, a life that, that allows you to, to really um, kind of be your best self and, and really, really 
kind of take on what you want to take on. So definitely as important as your physical health. Thank you so much, Amy. That was perfect. Perfect way to end it. Um, and I think that sharing that kind of knowledge with everybody now, especially during this time, a lot of people don't think about mental health or emotional health as being a way to be healthy. They just think of physical right away. Um, so I think it's good to think of all components of a person to be a more well-rounded individual. And that's what we try to do with Special Olympics. So we are excited to start some Strong Minds programming. Thank you so much for introducing it tonight. So thank you everyone for those wonderful questions and thank you to Amy and Megan and Chelsea for joining us tonight. It was so helpful to learn about keeping our minds strong as well as our bodies healthy, even in this virtual world. So let's wrap up this webinar, Amanda. This concludes our Team Tuesday webinar. Our next webinar will be on Tuesday, June, 15th at 7 p.m. Thank you to everyone for joining this webinar. We hope you enjoyed our presentation and our very, very special guest speakers. We will see you all again next month. And until then, stay healthy and stay safe.